seven. Barrett outside, the switch. Donchich goes, oh, what a great score! Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. I hope all is well. Thank you guys so much for tuning into the video. I really do appreciate it. So the New York Knicks are going to be taking on the Charlotte Hornets tomorrow night. And the New York Knicks have a chance to advance or be 3-1 and one when it comes to the 2022-23 to regular season. And that's the same thing for the Charlotte Hornets. And the Hornets honestly have been a very impressive basketball team. When you take a look at the adversity and the change that they made at the head coaching position. You know, they do not have James Borrego anymore. And they actually have a brand new head coach, a Steve Clifford it's actually his second time with the Charlotte Hornets he coached the Hornets before in the past you know he's obviously a coach of the Orlando Magic took them to the took them to the first round of the playoffs a couple times so you're bringing in a coach that has experience of going to the playoffs maybe that roster wasn't the best so they kind of were stuck in the middle of nowhere I'm not saying he was the best of coach in the world but he's someone that's going to hold his players accountable and also just make sure he gets up in their jerseys and tells them to play defense. I'm not saying he's going to yell at them and be crazy in that type of way, but he's going to hold these guys accountable and make sure that they play hard, and he's going to get that out of them for sure. And I feel like that's something the Hornets didn't really personally have before. You have LaMelo Ball that has a wild personality. I'm not saying anything's wrong with it, or he just has a certain swag, and maybe he could be a little immature at times. I'm not hating on LaMelo Ball or anything like that, but immature when it comes to his play style, maybe not making the best of decisions at times, but we know he's an extremely talented basketball player. You have Book Knight that's gotten in trouble off the court a couple times, and just hopefully he keeps these players grounded. I'm not saying to be like a babysitter or anything like that, but you do have some personalities when it comes to this locker room that like, you know, Steve Clifford is probably aware of. So they went on, so they're 2-1-1 so far, and their wins are up against the San Antonio Spurs, and they actually took care of business versus the Atlanta Hawks. And the Atlanta Hawks were 2-0 and before they took on the Charlotte Hornets, and now they are 2-1. and And this is without LaMelo Ball. LaMelo Ball's out with an ankle injury. LaMelo Ball, one of the most gifted passers in the game, extremely crafty, the hang dribbles, just his handle is absolutely unbelievable. His ability to create his own shot, work down the lane, the touch, the finesse in his game is absolutely unbelievable. And you could say he's the best player for the Charlotte Hornets, or even Gordon Hayward, you can make that argument when healthy. It's just like when healthy, that's a huge thing with Gordon Hayward, because when he's healthy in his career, he's like a near 19, 20 point career type of scorer when you watch Hayward play the game of basketball. But it's not just like this Hornets team playing hard, it's like just getting production and doing a good job on the offensive glass. And when you take a look at the Charlotte Hornets starting lineup as of right now, they had versus the Atlanta Hawks. You have former New York Nick, Dennis Smith Jr., who's been playing some solid basketball. He has one start, but before that, he was pretty, he was, he was just showing good contribution or being very productive, coming off the bench, playing hard, and he's trying to revive his NBA career. And I'm happy for Dennis Smith Jr. He's playing some good ball so far. You have Kelly Oubre at the two position. You have Gordon Hayward at the three position. Then you have P.J. Washington. And then you go on to have a Mason Plumlee. And first off with Dennis Smith Jr., I love what he's done so far this season. He's shooting the three ball well. He's changed his mechanics. You could say they're still a little slow, but he's getting results. It's early on in the season, but he's shooting it very well from the outside. He's working down the lane. He's making nice passes. He's averaging like 13 points per game right now, five assists. It's good efficiency. Before when he was coming off the bench, he was still contributing as well. So it's awesome seeing Dennis Smith Jr. get reps out there and play a good brand of basketball. And they're also winning on top of that. But I do think Jalen Brunson is going to do a good job in this matchup when it comes to his strength, his hesitations, his crossover, the way he utilizes screens, how he's a three-level scorer, and he's more consistent from the outside and from mid-range and at the basket than Dennis Smith Jr. I don't think Dennis Smith Jr. personally has the athleticism he had before. He had this very nice tomahawk slam in transition, but then there was another play. He's like, I'm maybe going to give my back a break because he actually has had some back injuries so far at the Knicks or when he was with the Knicks or throughout his career that he just like gave up and was like, nope, I'm probably not going to throw this one down here. But Dennis Smith Jr. is still someone that likes to use that quick first step. Maybe he's not ex as explosive as he used to be, but he still has a quick first step and he can work down the lane when he just has a screen or maybe he catches a defender out of position. He can still blow by you, use his dexterity around the basket, use his solid athleticism. So we have to watch out for him moving without the basketball. And Brunson, I think, is going to be physical, work down the lane and be able to hit difficult shots on him and 
to just make beautiful reads out there on the floor. And if Dennis Smith Jr. is keeping up with them, and let's say a second man is coming to help, he's going to find RJ outside on the perimeter or just find someone within the flow of the offense because that's been so beautiful about the Knicks so far that we are just we are just thriving within the flow of the offense. It's not just give the ball to Julius Randle, go to work. It's not just give the ball to RJ Barrett, go to work. No, we're making the extra pass if it's in the interior or even on the outside. So it's been beautiful just seeing everyone make that extra pass, even when it comes to the second unit. It's been absolutely contagious. Ages. Then you look at the center position for the like the Hornets I wanted to bring up because he's an underrated passer of the ball. He averaged nearly four assists last season, and he's averaging four assists so far this season, and that's Mason Plumlee, and that's something Mitchell Robinson's need, Mitchell Robinson needs to look out for. Yes, Mason Plumlee's not some crazy offensive scorer or anything like that. He doesn't have a jump shot from the outside, and I believe he is the one that changed his free throw routine. Now he shoots with his left hand. It's something unique like that. But he's going to have to be able to box out Mitch Robinson in this game. I understand he had, what, five offensive rebounds last game. Amazing. But then he had six rebounds, so he only had one defensive rebound. He's going to have to do a better job really boxing out using his physicality in this game because Plumlee's a veteran in this league, and he's been in the league longer than him, and he does a good job positioning, and he does the dirty work. But he also has nice vision out there on the floor. If nothing's there at the basket, he's not going to force it up with a dunk or a hook shot. He's going to kick it outside of the perimeter, and we cannot allow offensive rebounds in this game we cannot give the Hornets any life and that should be the mentality with any team and just overall the New York Knicks need to do a good job just reading the passing lanes we need to do a good job just shutting off these dribble handoffs and and look out for as well like let's say if we bottle up Plumlee or Mitch bottles up Plumlee or something like that Kelly Oubre could be cutting back door because Kelly Oubre has expanded his offensive game. He's always been athletic coming out of Kansas, but he's expanded his game to the outside. So far this season, he's shot it well. There's still some inconsistencies there, but it looks like his shot's starting to even get better when it comes to off the bounce and his ability to attack the basket as well. So that matchup scares me with Evan Fournier. I'm not going to lie with you guys at all. And there are some tough defensive assignments in this game because we know Evan Fournier is a step slow, I feel like, all the time on defense. He's a decent team defender. But Evan Fournier is going to have to play within the flow of the offense. Don't force those off-the-dribble twos. If there is space, yes, you can get to that floater. But everyone should be playing within the flow of the offense. That's just, that's just how basketball should be unless it's like last possession. We need a shot. Let's go to our best player. Or even if you don't have that key best player, you still want to make that extra pass and get a very quality shot. So when it comes to Kelly Oubre's first step and just his explosiveness, I am scared of how he's going to be defensively in this game. And Kelly Oubre is a damn good defender as well. So he's going to do a good job closing outside on the perimeter. So this is going to be a tough matchup. Fournier is just going to have to play smart. He's going to have to play hard. He's going to have to be physical because Kelly Oubre at times does a good job just going after his own miss, offensive rebound, kicking it out, or using his athleticism inside and finish with his left or right hand, or even with a reverse. And when it comes to three position, RJ Barrett's going to be defending Gordon Hayward, or most likely he will be. And Gordon Hayward went healthy. He could still score the heck out of the basketball. Maybe he doesn't have that speed and somewhat of explosiveness that he had in Utah, but he's still a professional scorer for the basketball. If you leave him, o- leave him open outside on the perimeter, he could still knock it down. He did struggle versus the Atlanta Hawks, so he's looking to have a bounce back game, and he can create and get to that mid range game as well so rj is going to make sure he has to make sure he always has a hand up and if even if he is a step slow defensively hustle and look to, look to just contest it the best you can and gordon Hayward just has a very soft touch around the basket he's proven to be a difficult shot maker in this league rj is gonna have to be strong he's gonna have to be physical working on the lane he's gonna have to be unpredictable and what i mean by that i'm not asking for him to have some crazy hesitations or breaking him down off the dribble or anything like that yes he could he's capable of breaking him down like off the dribble driving to the basket. I'm not asking him to shoot jump shots off the dribble this game. But use a Euro step, you know, use an up fake. I didn't like that he just drove at Bobo last game and didn't use an up fake. Bobo had like three blocks at one point in the game. He's long one of the longest wingspans in the league. He's extremely tall. So he's gonna have to use he's gonna have to use up fakes and just be unpredictable when it comes to driving to the basket and knock down your open threes from the outside. Get up in Gordon Hayward's jersey and make sure that you close out very hard. And just just be extremely disciplined. We know RJ's been off to a rocky start when it comes to his efficiency. And he needs to finish well off the basket. And get to the free throw line. Be physical and get, get to the free throw line as well. Just catch Gordon Hayward on his heels when it comes. Not just, like, I'm not even going to say RJ is crazy speed. But just be stronger. And just be like, I'm a grown man in this league. He shot, he shot it well from the free throw line. And let's see if he keeps that up in. We'll see what R.J. Barrett does in this game. And Julius Randle, just keep doing what you're doing, man. Julius Randle, 
His, it just looks like his head is right on his shoulders right now. He's a good head on his shoulders. His attitude's amazing. He just seems like a great teammate right now. And hopefully he keeps it up. He's getting shots within the flow of the offense, which I absolutely love. The threes that he's knocking down aren't a bunch of just sidestep threes. So the threes, if you do take them, continue to just get them within the flow of the offense. Don't just attempt those step backs. Or if you shoot fadeaways, I'm okay with it as long as the defense is collapsed in the paint. Maybe you have a height advantage as well and then you have no choice to shoot it maybe the shot clock's winding down but continue to just attack and i think it's a good matchup versus pj washington pj washington's been solid this season he's averaging 13 points per game and i do think randall's going to continue to play hard when it comes to the defense side of the basketball but make sure you attack them but also be unselfish be aware that when you are attacking someone may be open outside on the perimeter and that should be rj's approach to this game as well and I want the New York Knicks to continue to get out and run. You know, the New York Knicks have been one of the best teams when it's come to getting out and running this season. You just put pushing the pace and transition, getting easier buckets, and that definitely does does help when we don't have a crazy creative offense or we don't try new things like crazy like a Nick Nurse from the Raptors. So let's get those easy buckets and play within the strengths of our players, like an RJ and like RJ. Let's get out. Let's get him out and running. Let's have him like. Just have confidence out there. In the second half of that game, last last night versus the Magic, his shots are starting to fall a little bit. Yes, he wasn't perfect. Finished with 20 points. I know like four of those points were in garbage time, but hopefully that just gives him confidence knocking down his first threes of the season. Just got to knock down open shots. I'm not asking for a lot, but he was the his third overall pick honeymoon phase is over it's his fourth season in the league. It's just like the flashes are over. It's time to be consistent. There's no excuses. We have a point guard. Randall's constantly moving the ball. But I just want us to continue to move the ball. And I do think our bench is going to do a very good job versus their bench. And they're missing other key guys that usually kill us. Of At least a Terry Rozier. Terry Rozier is a very hot and cold player. But he's actually doubtful for this game. So there's a probability that most likely he won't play. He's either hot or cold. But it seems like the Hornets, they would get an offensive rebound. Terry Rozier splash or cut back door, drive to the basket, throw it down. So he was someone that we would always have to look out for. And if he does end up playing for this game last second, we're just going to have to get up in his jersey and play extremely hard on him and you even take a look at what's his name Cody Martin he's a gritty player that does a good job rebounding the ball getting after it defensively as well but I do like our batch our bench matchup compared to theirs but someone the New York Knicks should really take a look at when it comes to backup center position and Isaiah Hardenstein's gonna have to do a good job on him is Nick Richards Nick Richards just came off a very good game versus the Atlanta Hawks. They came out victorious versus the Hawks. They came out victor- victorious versus the San Antonio Spurs as well. And that Hawks game, Nick Richards was amazing. 20 points and what was it, 10 rebounds. He And out of those 10 rebounds, like four or five of them were like offensive rebounds. And he's athletic. He has a hook shot in his game as well. He doesn't really shoot a lot of jump shots. But he's someone that has a soft touch around the basket. And He's going to fight. He's going to play very hard. And that's someone Isaiah Hornstein's going to have to compete against. And I think this is going to be a good backup matchup. You know, this was the Hornets' latest game versus the Atlanta Hawks. And we know Isaiah Hornstein's going to hustle. We know Nick Richards is going to hustle coming out of Kentucky. I don't know if he's going to have 20 points again. Well, let's make sure Isaiah Hornstein, that 20 points does not happen again. And we do not allow second chance opportunities versus this Hornets team that is young and just wants to just gain as much momentum as possible throughout this game, especially maybe they're considered an underdog with no Lamella ball. So Hornstein, like you did last game, eight rebounds, playing very hard, do a, do a good job distributing the basketball. And I think Obi Toppin's definitely going to be a key in this game. And how is our point guard going to really step up to really contribute to Obi Toppin? And Obi Toppin, when he's at his best, obviously he's moving without the basketball. He's always constantly moving without the basketball. He's leaking out as well. So is Emmanuel quickly going to play another mature game? Could we rely on him? Like, If he doesn't score a lot of points, it's fine. Just make consistent reads. Realize your shot isn't falling and make the extra pass. Do what the rest of the team is doing and quickly did that last game. We want it to be contagious that everyone's constantly moving the basketball. Get up into the opposing player's jersey, whoever you're matched up against when it comes to off the bench. Their bench rotations have been interesting due to injuries, but Obi Toppin's going to have a very interesting matchup versus Jalen McDaniels, you know. When it comes to the Charlotte Hornets, Jalen McDaniels is a pretty solid player. He's averaging, what, eight, nine points per game so far this season. He was solid last year. He's capable of shooting the three ball, shooting at it, four, shooting nearly a 40% clip or at a 40% clip. He has the length, so he's the capability of utilizing that length and finishing around the basket. So Obi Toppin's going to have to bring his A game when it comes to the defense side of the basketball. And Obi Toppin, yeah, he's just going to have to close outside on the perimeter, make Jalen McDaniels work, and... 
try to get him to foul trouble, just leak out, get him tired, get him fatigued throughout this game. Cam Reddish, is he going to have another solid game? I would like to get him involved more in the second half this time, depending on how the game goes on. Obviously, Cam Reddish came into the game, was pretty solid. Once again, he had seven points. But those con- the contacts of the seven point those seven points were very good, and he made a crucial pass to Mitchell Robinson at the end of the game, as well you could say. But Radish made a very nice three off of great ball movement, just making the extra pass. It's just been contagious. The ball movement we have to continue to get out and run, and off of a made free throw by the Orlando Magic, quickly pushing ahead, found a Radish in transition. Radish finished very strong. Is Radish going to knock down his threes? Is his shot going to be flat again after a solid game, or is it going to? have more arc on and is he going to attack well we all we all know Reddish can get to the basket it just comes down to consistently finishing utilizing his athleticism taking smart shots as well not always settling and Reddish has done that in these opportunities coming off coming off the bench I really do got to give credit to him so the Charlotte Hornets definitely do have some solid bench pieces RJ Barrett's gonna like I want RJ Barrett to have a huge game going back to the starters and as long as we win I'm happy but RJ is a key piece for the future. It's fourth year in the league. Honeymoon phase over. And I'm interested to see like how the New York Knicks match up versus the Charlotte Hornets. Um, the backups, Kai Jones hasn't played a lot. Mark Williams hasn't played a lot. Get up in Book Knight's jersey. Make sure you, you don't let him freely cut back door and utilize his athleticism. And force him into very difficult shots. He's someone that likes to play with the ball in his hands. He's, he's kind of struggled. And he's going to look to bounce back. But I do think the New York Knicks do have a huge advantage when it comes to the bench department. And if it comes down to the bench being important, the New York Knicks definitely do need to take advantage of that. And hopefully we come out victorious. Let me know down below your thoughts. Peace out, y'all.